The myth that we're talking about is the myth of the individual scientists working in their garage or on a workbench alone, and they've been doing that for years, and all the great ideas have come from those sorts of individuals. And it's true that a lot of the best ideas come from individuals who are deep thinkers, who are working in somewhat isolation. They get to read papers. As, as Albert Einstein said, we do stand on the shoulders of giants, and many of those giants are previous scientists. But to make something go from the laboratory to a, uh, to a, a, a real industry or a real innovation, takes a large number of different types of people, very interdisciplinary teams from physicists and chemists to the engineers who know how to take uh, a material and, for example, make it into a battery that's got the kind of energy densities that make uh, an automobile go 400 miles as opposed to 40 miles. Those kinds of steps from the laboratory where you have a single material made in a laboratory all the way to a battery that works and then to something that can scale to a million of these things can't be done by an individual inventor. And even Edison, uh, even Edison is the great example of the guy who invented the light bulb and the phonograph. Though the myth is that he worked alone in his laboratory, in reality, of course, he worked in a substantial lab that he ran in, in, in New Jersey, in Menlo Park. Policy makers need to focus on the strategy behind what the U.S. wants to do. So uh, right now, the U.S. is not very strong on policy behind energy, for example. So if you look, I'll give the energy as the example. In energy, we have an ecosystem which is not a complete ecosystem. We have, it's driven by utilities and by big oil companies, and, and that's great because they have their need to make a profit, but there isn't a strategic focus uh, for building up the energy economy. So we can try to fund it from a research point of view, but actually from a technology point of view, uh, I think the problems aren't so bad as they are from the policy point of view. I think, in my opinion, policy makers really have to focus on, on a national policy in terms of what outcomes we want versus just focusing on, uh, on uh, letting all uh, players play. So on an international level, if you look at China, they're actually being quite strategic in where they're placing their investments, even on the science side. Or take a small country even like Taiwan, who dominates now in the display industry. Uh, they, or now Korea is now competing, but they actually have done that by being very strategic about their investment in research, their investment and thoughts about policy, exactly how to make it uh, uh, more easy for uh, those, those industries to grow and thrive. There is a responsibility to discuss the basic infrastructure in this country, right? Do, does the U.S. want to be leading in science and technology or not? And so we have to address that question. I assume that the President uh, and, his, and, and Mitt Romney will be, able to, will be discussing how they're going to stimulate the very basic underpinning of what this country is about, right? So there's innovation, there's science, but also, also there's, there's the, the economy and, and how those things, how educating people, how innovation of those educated people ends up in the economy, yes, that will be discussed, I'm sure. President, current President, President Obama, clearly has talked about the, uh, the energy economy, which you know, which needs better definition, but presumably will be discussed. But I think either candidate uh, will be discussing how you create jobs. And so if you look at jobs and you go back 40 years and ask where the jobs of today came from, whether you ask it's, whether it's Google or whether it's Hewlett Packard, those jobs came from innovation that happened deep inside of universities and laboratories over 30 or 40 years ago. So they're forced to talk about it at some levels. How are you going to create the jobs that you'd like to create?